Squad Radio, the music you want. With your host, Steve Dan. This place is like Dr. Seuss's worst nightmare. RadioWatch.com. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming at you live and in a living color with another edition of What Makes You Famous. This is my podcast. I've been having a lot of fun having little conversations with people, finding out their story, learning a little bit. Thank you so much to the folks that have already come on What Makes You Famous. And I've been getting some feedback. In the form of downloads, for the most part, people have been listening to the podcast. I'm not getting anyone that's really saying much, except I did get one huge compliment today from a gentleman that I know listens to lots and lots of podcasts all day long, just like me. I listen to at least eight hours a day of podcast. Yeah, I do, because I'm driving around and just listening. Uh, I listen to uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, let's see, what's it? Uh, oh, I've been listening to a new podcast, uh, called good stuff. He's a local guy in little rock. Also the Southern fried geekery. That's another one that I've been listening to also out of little rock in that area. They talk about comics, comic books, and, uh, you know, geekery of all kinds, both podcasts pretty much do, uh, that and the like. The good stuff one, see, now the Southern Friday Geekery is four guys, and usually they're by themselves. They have a little cat that runs around every once in a while. You can hear that. But the good stuff one uh, is C.K. Helms, and he has his kids running around, and he's made use of them as well. So that that's kind of fun, I think. But, uh, oh, getting back to, yes, I did get one huge compliment today. Uh, I won't say his name but his initials are jason lancaster hopefully i'll get him on the podcast pretty soon he's a local musician in the arkansas area from west memphis and uh i know he listens all the time and he said that my podcast sounded pretty good he listened to the one with ryan hinman that's the first one on the feed at the Podbean website and he said it sounded pretty good and i had some production value so yeah all right I got a little compliment on my podcast. And uh, if it sounds a little bit different today, it's because I'm using my wireless mic. I put in, I, I plugged in my Shure SM58 wireless because I want to move around while I'm doing this one. You remember that movie, Pump Up the Volume, Christian Slater? He had his wireless mic set up. And, you know, that way he can walk around and get his thoughts together. Because this podcast is not even structured today. This one is kind of a, All right, the podcast is usually what makes you famous, where I interview people, and this one's going to be more of a what makes you think, because I'm thinking about things, (laughs) just like everybody else, just like you, I want to know your thoughts. You know, I want to suck the marrow of life, you being the marrow and your brain. (laughs) Everybody has a story to tell. Now. I, I know I, I start the podcast off always with, what's up, party people? It's Keys Dan from RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. That gets the formalities out of the way. You know where I'm from. If you look at RadioWhat.com, you're going to find out part of my story. If you look at DJLittleRock.com, you'll find another part of my story. Now, the main website, which I hardly ever mention, is keysdan.com. The reason I don't mention that one is because some people just have a hard time trying to spell what they just heard. Keysdan, K-E-Y-S-D-A-N. Trying to make it a household name. Yes, I am living in in, uh, Arkansas. (laughs) Boy, am I stuttering? Probably. I'm not going to edit any of this. This is just going to be a regular podcast 
having some fun, thinking about things because it's Tuesday and I have an hour to spend with you. So where did Keys Dan come from? I'm from the Florida Keys. I was born in Miami, raised in Fort Lauderdale, and then I moved to the Florida Keys just a little bit after high school. I did a little bit of college, did some broadcasting at the Connecticut Schools of Broadcasting. That They have a campus down in, in the Fort Lauderdale area. So that's where I got my broadcasting chops. Well, they got rehoned, I guess, because originally in 86, I went to college radio in Broward at WKPX 88.5. Now, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, just using records and learning how to be on the microphone and learning how to chat most of the time, talking to people that aren't there. So the difference between a DJ and a crazy person, you sit in a padded room talking to people that aren't there and you hear music in your head. Hmm. Maybe there's not much difference between a DJ and a crazy person, but I digress once again. Okay. So keys, Dan comes from the Florida keys. That's uh, where I really got into the DJ thing, uh, DJing weddings, parties, really enjoying myself, being part of people's greatest times. You know, when they're having birthday parties, they're having their weddings. The Florida Keys is a destination wedding dream come true because most of the time, it is nice down there. And the Florida Keys are 113 miles long from the top part at Card Sound all the way down to the bottom at Key West at mile marker zero. So Keys Dan became my moniker. Previous to that, I was known as Dancing Danny G. But we might get into that later. I think I still use that, though. <laughs> I have a Dancing Denny G Facebook page that I just can't let it go. I can't let go of the name. Weird. Anyway, Keys Dan. KeysDan.com has about 500,000 pages because I just went buck wild. I put all kinds of information out there about how to plan weddings, about how to be a DJ, about, well, there's, party, there's a party store on there. Um, I think I still sell stuff. I haven't really made a lot of money on the party store, but that's not where that's not what I'm about anyway. <laughs> I, oh yeah, there's a t-shirt shop. So if you want to get a t-shirt with various radio, what and keys, Dan live entertainment things, you could find that link at keys, Dan.com, DJ, little rock.com, even radio, what.com, all those places. So, all right, I'm wandering around the studios here. And I don't even know if I'm going to post this. I probably will because I took the time to record it. And hopefully you're enjoying the sound of my voice. Maybe I'll just be that friend in your ear while you're working, while you're working out, while you're walking around. Maybe I'll be that guy. <laughs> Speaking of, if you want to be a part of the program, if you want to tell your story, give me a call at 501 470 Eight, six. Or you can just send an email, info at radiowhat.com, and you could tell your story. If you're close, if you're in the central Arkansas area, I'll bring my equipment to you, and we can record you. I, I think the last recording I did was on Sunday, this past Sunday, and we just went to the Faulkner County Library, and they allowed me to use uh, John's office. And John, I'm guessing he's the boss because his office is right in front. And he's got a big table, and that was great. But from what I understand, the uh, the Faulkner County Library allows you to use their rooms for various things, and that's a great, great thing. I mean, we're paying for the library. That's cool of them to let us use some of the room if they're not utilizing it for anything else. I know they have story time over there at the library as well. and. Uh, Oh, yeah, they got books. So anybody remember books before they got the Kindle, before they got online? You remember books? I used to read a lot. 
I don't read much anymore. I need to start reading. Or at least, since I'm listening to podcasts, might as well get audiobooks. Yeah, learn some stuff. Which is where you come in. I want to learn from you. Everyone has a story. The podcast that I've done already, and there's only been, I don't know, not even 10, maybe 9. And the people I've talked to were so surprising. I had no idea where they're from, where they came from. I have had, I just see them, at, you know, from what I see on their Facebook page, their social media. That's the only reference I have for most people. Okay. And then there's some people that I see every day. I see their smiling faces. Yeah, they're doing well now, but they came from somewhere. And some of them came from a dark place. So if you haven't listened to some of the podcasts that I've already put up, I encourage you to go ahead and check it out because some of the stories were just surprising. You know, I don't know. You, you can't tell audibly that I got surprised at some of the things that these folks said. And I enjoyed it. Man, it was, it's like crack. <laughs> I'm getting off on hearing people's stories. So please. I implore you, you have a story to tell. Even if you don't want to tell your whole life story, even if you just have a tidbit, something that you would tell every Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Did I ever tell you the time about that guy? Did I ever tell you about the time that I went to? Did I ever tell you about the time? Yeah. I want to hear those stories, too, because those are pretty cool. (laughs) So, yeah. And plus, Plus, I want to promote you. The whole reason that I got into radio was to promote people. You know, I got in. Yes, it it gives me a modicum of fame. When I got into terrestrial radio, you don't make a lot of money most of the time on the radio itself. It's the fame that you get. If people like what they hear, they'll invite you to do their parties. And that's where you make a couple bucks. Yes, you can make your rent. (laughs) You can make a pretty good living being a DJ, but people have to know that you're a DJ. So to get those first gigs, you take what you can get. So I remember, uh, this is 1986 when I took my first job for a wedding and I I think I I made 50 bucks, (laughs) you know, and I went to Guitar Center and Spent 75 to rent the equipment that I needed for that wedding. So I didn't make any money on that wedding. But the experience I got, it was great. It was great. Am I meandering too much? Possibly. (laughs) But I'm just having a good time at what makes you famous. (laughs) Yeah. Let me gather my thoughts here. Still standing around. Got the wireless mic in my hand. And I'm looking at, okay, why is it called What Makes You Famous? RadioWhat.com. That's where I got the name. Radio What. Okay, the reason that I called it Radio What is because, that. why did I call the, the radio station What? Because when I used to get voice tracks from people, when I was working at Exito 105.5 down in Miami, which is no longer there anymore, well, I used to get on the red carpet and I would ask these people, you know, the celebrities that were walking by, hey, could you say your name and say you're listening to Exito 105.5? And they would get on, on the mic and say, hey, this is Julio Iglesias and you're listening to what? What? So I have various celebrities saying, I'm listening to what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so that's where you call the station what and make use of those tracks how about that (laughs) i am wandering through the soup that is the thoughts in my head this fine tuesday evening oh it's april 2nd 2019 and you're listening to what makes you famous this is keys dan from the florida keys my name is dan And I'm from the Florida Keys. 
So, if you need a DJ, by the way, shameless plug, no, I have no shame in my game. I will plug all day long. If you need a DJ, check out DJLittleRock.com. Get yourself a, oh, check to see if I'm available first, and then get yourself a free price quote, and you can book it right there. Easy as that. I'll call you directly after. As soon as that little, as soon as you hit that you want to quote, it sends me a text. So I know you need me. So I call you back. (laughs) All right. So back to where I was. What am I thinking about? I don't know. What have I said so far? Not much, really. But if you're still listening, and I wouldn't know why you were listening, I'm still here. I still want to know about you. (laughs) So, whatever I've said here today, tonight, because it is 8 o'clock in the evening, whatever I've said, give me a call. 501-470-6386. We will set up a time that is convenient for you, and you can tell your story. On what makes you famous. So what's going on? What's going on in this fine Tuesday? As he picks up his phone. And finds out what is happening in the world. Puts in his little code. Goes to. Where would he go for news? Where would he go for news? Would he go to Google News? No. Would he go to CNN? No. Would he go to Fox? No. Where would he go? Twitter. Hey, uh, Twilight Zone, hosted by Jordan Peele on CBS All Access. That seems to be something that's going on today. The classic series is reborn, hosted by Jordan Peele. The Twilight Zone is now streaming exclusively on CBS All Access. Now, I did hear about the CBS All Access. And speaking of that, I did cut the cord. I have no cable. But I did just go with the Wi-Fi services, and I feel like that's working for me. I have uh, Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. So that gives me all my entertainment needs. Uh, They're all filled by that. And I haven't really seen the need to get the CBS, although CBS has the, the new Star Trek Discovery on there. and. I haven't seen any of that, but I really haven't heard much about that either. So here's something else to possibly entice you into getting CBS All Access is The Twilight Zone, a reboot hosted by Jordan Peele. Hmm. Well, have to look in on that. Probably won't get it because, you know, $10 a month, $10 a month, $10 a month. They all want 10 bucks. And eventually, you're back up to where you were paying for cable. I think cable was about 90 bucks a month. And with the three services, it's somewhere around 40 So, and no commercials. I like that idea, too. Although, when I was on radio, commercials were the stuff of life. You had to have commercials. Had to have your ads to make sure that uh, you kept the thing going. So let's see, what's going on in the world? This is Us is airing on NBC. There's another show I haven't seen, but I've heard lots of good things about it. It's a story of love, life, and family unfolds with unexpected revelations. This is Us. Yeah, yeah, don't have NBC, so I won't be watching that. Unless it comes up on Hulu or Netflix or Amazon Prime, either one. Let's see. What is going on in the world this Tuesday evening? Well, this is visual, so it's taking in the beauty of Tokyo's cherry blossom season. It's cherry blossom season in Japan's capital, and the people are sharing snaps of the beautiful trees in bloom. Oh, by the way, RadioWhat.com, it's the Twitter that's associated with that is Radio What Twit. And I, I usually tweet, well, I tweet a lot of the songs 
that I play on Radio What. And the artists seem to like that. Every time a song is played, it tweets it. And then the artists, oh, look at that. Radio What played my stuff. They might give a retweet. They might give a like. It's all social. Gets that social media media put in in place there. So the radio station has its own Twitter. And then KeysDan.com also has a Twitter, KeysDan. That makes a whole lot of sense. And then there's the karaoke by KeysDan Twitter. That's a whole other animal. Because ever since I got to Arkansas, all right, when I was back in, in South Florida, I had all the songs that I needed to do a karaoke show. But I really rarely ever did karaoke shows down in the Florida Keys. It was mostly weddings and parties. And at those things, I think maybe one one wedding a year would be a karaoke wedding where they would go, oh, you have karaoke. Well, yeah, sign me up. And I always had the screens. I had a little television set up so I can do music videos. And I still do that since I have the, the screen set up. I can also do karaoke. So it works both ways. So, yeah. I, ever since I got here to Arkansas, I fell into karaoke because I had, they had the, the need and it was pretty popular here and it still is. I do one, maybe two karaoke shows every week. Uh, the one that I do almost every Friday, pretty much every Friday, at least 50 Fridays a year is over at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, the Rab. See, Conway's a dry county, and they couldn't name it Bar because of that reason. So they named it Rab and made the R backwards. So when you see it in your mirror, in the background, it looks like Bar. Oh, very smart people. Very smart. So so at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Oh, starting this Thursday, if you're listening, like as soon as I put it out, is uh, the Rab as well. So every other Thursday, I'll be at the Rab. And then these are the off Thursdays. The other Thursdays, I'm at the Old Post Barbecue in Russellville, Arkansas. Now, it is coming up on wedding season and prom season for that matter. So this weekend, I have a, a prom in Hector, Arkansas. I'm, man, I, I like those. I like proms. I like doing different things a lot of times but then the comfort of having the the rab every friday is pretty comfortable as well did i say comfort twice in that sentence possibly (laughs) so yes yes i am i have a lot of fun doing the dj thing it uh it makes me happy to be a part of those celebrations so all right so I talked about the Tokyo cherry blossom season. What is going on? Oh, you can't get out of Twitter uh, without a little message from President Trump. Uh, I'll try not to get too political, but you know. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, religion, been through the gambit. Uh, politics, nah, I pay some attention, but not as much as I should probably because that is affecting all of our lives. So let's see on Twitter as of today, this is uh, April 2nd, 2019 Trump takes aim at Puerto Rican leaders after disaster bill fails. Now, Now this is not written here, but I did see, I did see a joke somewhere that he wants his, his, uh, paper towels back that he gave to the Puerto Ricans. After the hurricane. (laughs) Terrible, terrible. Anyway, the little blurb underneath Trump takes aim at Puerto Rican leaders after disaster bill fails. President Trump lashed out at Carmen Yulin Cruz, the mayor of San Juan, calling her crazed and incompetent after Senate Democrats blocked a disaster aid bill over lack of funding for the island. And President Trump, he is known for his tweets. So these are the two, three, 
And there's three tweets that have been put on the recap for Twitter here, at least in my Twitter feed. Let's see. Donald J. Trump tweets, and this is like 22 hours ago, says the Democrats today killed a bill that would have provided great relief to farmers and yet more money to Puerto Rico, despite the fact that Puerto Rico has already been scheduled to receive more hurricane relief funding than any place, this is in quotation marks, in history. The people of Puerto Rico, continues on another tweet, are great, but the politicians are incompetent or corrupt. Puerto Rico got far more money than Texas and Florida combined, yet their government can't do anything right. The place is a mess. Nothing works. FEMA and the military work emergency miracles, but politicians like, and yet another tweet, the, the crazed and incompetent mayor of San Juan have done such a poor job of bringing the island back to health, $91 billion to Puerto Rico, and now the Dems want to give them more, taking dollars away from our farmers and so many others. Disgraceful. Well, <laughs> like him or not, he's our president. Puerto Rico has not been given, okay, Ray Steele, it says uh, his Twitter is Ray Steele, S-T-E-E-L-E-R-T-V-6, and he tweeted, Puerto Rico has not been given $91 billion. And then Melanie Schmitz, her Twitter handle is Mel's Lien, M-E-L-S-L-I-E-N, no one is sure why Trump keeps saying Puerto Rico got $91 billion. It didn't. $91 billion was the estimated cost of damages to the island following Hurricane Maria. PR has been granted around just $1.5 billion of a larger pot of aid funding previously approved by Congress so far. So there's a little pushback on the amount of money that Puerto Rico has gotten in aid after Hurricane Maria. Let's see. Nick Wig and his Twitter handle is TBWEIG. He tweeted that the mayor is responsible for her city, not the island, and the money has not arrived in Puerto Rico. There are still billions short in rebuilding electrical grid and repairing homes. Remember, they're U.S. citizens too, hoping leaders find a better way forward for all involved. So it looks like, at least on my feed, they're all pushing back against Donald Trump. They think he's got it wrong. Well, let's continue. Let's see. Wajahat Ali. His Twitter handle is Wajahat Ali. Uh, I'm going to, <laughs> hopefully I didn't pronounce that wrong. Let's see. W-A-J-A-H-A-T-A-L-I. And he tweeted, more than 3,000 people have died in Puerto Rico, which has more than 3 million U.S. citizens. Trump wants to give the island zero dollars, but wants Alabama to have A-plus treatment for a tornado that killed 23. Imagine if he valued life equally. But that wouldn't be Trumpian, would it? Okay. Let's see. Kate Long tweets. Her, her Twitter handle is Kate Long. C-A-T-E underscore L-O-N-G. And she tweeted, for Trump, quotation, the people of Puerto Rico are great, but the politicians are incompetent or corrupt, end quote. Francis Robles this is at Francis Robles, did excellent reporting on PR housing reconstruction project where 70% of federal funds were siphoned away in administrative expenses. This is a problem. Muniland. Hashtag Muniland. What does that mean? Huh. <sighs> Looks like, uh, well, Puerto Rico's, okay, the, 
There's one last tweet that is referenced here, and this is from Justin Barragona, and it's Justin Bar at Justin at Justin Barragona, J U S T I N B A R A G O N A, discussing Trump lashing out at Puerto Ricans and complaining they've received too much money. White House spokesperson Hogan Gidley twice refers to Puerto Rico as that country. Hmm. So is the administration is the administration forgetting that Puerto Ricans are American citizens? Perhaps. Perhaps. I like to be in America. Everything's free in America. All right, let's uh, turn to other tweet, 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 tweet news. Green Day, oh, the band Green Day, set to release a handbook for the rebellious every woman. The band, along with illustrator Frank Caruso, will put out Last of the American Girls. Oh, that's the name of the, the book. Last of the American Girls later this year. While some fans are excited, others are confused as to why a graphic novel for the rebellious every woman who refuses to capitulate doesn't involve any women contributors. <laughs> well, rock and roll are really, I've heard of lots of rock stars that are into graphic novels that have lent themselves to that medium. I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, let's see. Let's see the tweets. Green Day tweeted out, and they're at Green Day, obviously. Rebel Girls Unite, our book with Frank Caruso, last of the American girls, is coming out on 1029. Pre-order your copy. All right. And it's got a little picture of a, it's got a graphic picture of a woman in a blue dress, blonde hair. And she's wearing boots. So, yeah. She is last of the American girls. And then there's a kind of a red, white, and blue stars and stripe uh, banner in the background. Not the American flag, but certainly a abstract, an act, abstract representation of said flag. Rolling Stone Magazine says Green Day will release their first book, an inspiring homage and handbook for the rebellious every woman who refuses to capitulate, called Last of the American Girls this fall. Some fans were excited by the news. I'm crying at work. I love my boys. That's Gabrielle and her or hit, yeah, her Twitter handle is Gabby Green Day at Gabby Green Day. So, yeah, she's a fan. Let's see. <laughs> and others pointed out the lack of a woman's perspective in a book designed for women. Rolling Stone, okay, replying to Rolling Stone and Green Day. I'm a huge fan. Oh, T Tanya Friedman is her name, and her Twitter handle is at, at Tanya Friedman, T A N I A. F R E E D M A N. And she's replying to Rolling Stone and Green Day. I'm a huge fan of Green Day. They are my favorite. But why are they writing a handbook for women? <laughs> okay. Here's a, uh, what I can guess is another woman, Lena. And her Twitter handle is at Wedro, We Drove North. Oh, We Drove North. W E drove north. Okay, we drove north. Boys, I love you with all my heart and would happily take several bullets for you. But don't you think the main rule to being an independent woman in punk should be to, well, not be told how to live their lives by men who have no experience in what it's like to live life as a woman? <laughs> that sounds like a valid point to me. <laughs> And here's one from Joy. Now, Joy 
has the Twitter handle of at Alex underscore getaway G E T A W A Y replying to most of these people. <laughs> They're all replied to Lena. I'm pretty sure this book is not meant to tell you how to live your life. Chill out. Lena replies back. I'm very much chill. LOL. I just think a handbook for women written by men sounds uh, contradictory and stupid. And I'd rather have my favorite band write about something closer to their own experience. That's literally it. <laughs> and Andy Zeisler, Andy with an I, A N D uh, at Andy Zeisler, A N D I Z E I. S L E R tweets what rebellious every woman among us has not longed for an inspiring handbook authored and illustrated by checks notes four men and zero women. <laughs> the visual on that, you know, like, like a, uh, a newscaster looks down at the notes, Hmm, four men and zero women telling me, how to do that. <laughs> okay. And then the last tweet that I'll mention here. I'm let's see. This is from Mickey Halpin at Mickeypedia. M I K K I P E D I A. I'm so inspired that three dudes found a fourth dude to illustrate this homage for <laughs> rebellious every woman. <laughs> Okay, so maybe there's some backlash on this. Hey, you put it out there and you see what sticks. You know, if you have this idea, hey, put it out there. Similar to me just kind of rambling on about what's going on in the news on this random Tuesday. Maybe I'll do it every Tuesday. Maybe. It's possible. I usually have about an hour to kill on a Tuesday night. Let's see. What else is going on? In the Twitter news. Oh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker poster has been released. I don't know what you think about that. Joaquin Phoenix Phoenix doing the Joker. There's so many good Jokers out there. The Joker on Gotham. He is just, man, what a, he's got a Cheshire grin. Uh, you know, mouth that's so wide. Just already looks like the gro Joker. Uh, let's see. The uh, I know this is a visual thing. The first poster for Joaquin Phoenix's Joker was released. The film is due to, for release in early October, but for now, fans have the first poster for Joaquin Phoenix's take on the character. And it's kind of a, meh, kind of a payaso. Uh, it looks like, a, like your standard clown looking up at the sky. So, yeah. I like the Joker character. I like Joaquin Phoenix. So let's see if we can't put those two together. In other tweet news, Justin Bieber issues apology for insensitive April Fool's prank. I did not even see it. Let's see what happened. Earlier in the week, the singer posted several pictures hinting that he is expecting his first child with wife. Haley Bieber. He received backlash after he revealed the posts were an April Fool's Day prank, with some saying it was insensitive to those who are struggling to conceive. Bieber has since issued an apology for the joke, saying, I didn't mean, <laughs> I didn't at all mean to be insensitive to all those who can't have children. Hey, that's a that's a tough issue, but it's a joke, people. It's a joke. Laugh. Enjoy yourself. Let's see. Uh, today, oh, the Today Show um, chimed in. Justin Bieber blasted for insensitive April Fool's Day pregnancy prank. Okay. Bieber pranks fans with photos hinting at a pregnancy. Justin Bieber's pregnancy prank. 
All right. Well, check out the Beebs. I'm sure he's taken those tweets down since it was an April Fool's Day prank. It's just a prank. Oh, Justin. Let's see. Oh, all right. In gaming, Mortal Kombat unveils new character, Cetrion, C-E-T-R-I-O-N. Another new character joins the cast of the fighting game, making her first appearance in the franchise. Cetrion is a playable elder god. She's kind of cool looking. She's all green. Kind of looks like a uh, the Orion girl from Star Trek, the original series. Well, I guess Orion girls were all throughout the Star Trek franchise. But that's what she looks like. An elder goddess joins the ranks of Mortal Kombat. Welcome, Cetrion, to MK11. And that's from the at Mortal Kombat tweet, tweet, Twitter feed. Tweet, tweet. Let's see. Oh, as I'm going through this, <laughs> my Twitter feed is updating. Ah, seven minutes ago in politics, Chicago elects its first black woman mayor who also happens to be the city's first openly gay mayor. Cool. In Chicago's 182-year history, the city has never had a black woman or an openly gay person as its mayor. That changed on Tuesday night with the runoff election of Lori Lightfoot, a former prox- former prosecutor and now leader of the Windy City. Well, congratulations to Lori Lightfoot. Good job. Do a good job. <laughs> Chicago, the Windy City. Let's see. In weather news, oh, no, su- no tsunami warning after a 6.5 magnitude earthquake rocks Alaska's Alishuan Islands. The earthquake hit the Alishuan Islands, a a chain of volcanic islands in the Pacific Ocean, according to Alaska's Earthquake Monitoring Agency. It was the largest U.S. quake so far in 2019, and no tsunami watch or warning was issued for the U.S. West Coast or Canada. And then here is a U.S. emergency alert alert tweet three hours ago. This is from at ENS alerts. Alaska earthquake measuring 6.5, about 18 miles east of Crisco Volcano in the Aleutian Islands. Depth 19 miles, no threat of a tsunami. I'm sure they're happy about that. Alaskans. Let's see. Oh, right now, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is airing on Bravo. It's about 8.33 in the evening, Central Standard Time. Is it Standard Time? Right, we sprang forward. Okay. And the City of Angels serves up a slice of heaven with The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I guess they do that so the people can tweet Live tweet as they're watching the show. Hmm. Oh, wow. Here's something I heard yesterday. Nipsey Hustle. And uh, there's a search for Nipsey Hustle's killer is an all hands on deck response, police say. The investigation is huge, and the search for Nipsey, Nipsey's killer is an all hands on deck response. Los Angeles' police spokesperson, Lizeth Lornelli, told The Hollywood Reporter Nipsey was fatally shot on Sunday. Let's see. Ryan Parker at The Ryan Parker tweets, Police tell me the manhunt for Nipsey Hussle's killer is all hands on deck. The Hollywood Reporter tweets at THR, The Los Angeles police spokeswoman says the manhunt underway to find the suspect who shot and killed rapper Nipsey Hussle 
on Sunday afternoon is an all hands, all hands on deck response. And let's see. Approximately, let's see, two days ago, the LAPD HQ at LAPD HQ at approximately 3.20 p.m., there was a shooting reported in the area of Slauson Avenue and Crenshaw Boulevard. Three victims were transported to a local hospital where one was pronounced deceased. We have no suspect info at this time and will provide more details as they become available. That was two days ago. Now, yesterday, update from the LAPD HQ. The suspect in the shooting is described as a male, black, and LAPD South Bureau homicide is conducting an investigation to locate him and anyone else involved. You can expect the area of Slauson and Crenshaw to be impacted by street closures and heavy traffic for several hours. And here's the response. The suspect, all right, the heading for the response is the suspect is in the rapper's murder is someone hustle knows, in quotation marks. New York Daily News reported. And the actual tweet from the New York Daily News is the shocking death of Nipsey Hussle may be gang related. And the update yesterday from the New York Daily News, a source said LAPD homicide detectives have a suspect in their sights, and it's someone Hussle knows. Ooh. Let's see. Complex tweeted at Complex yesterday. This morning, a manhunt is underway for Nipsey Hussle's killer. Law enforcement can only describe the suspect as a black male in his 20s. Mm. And then Complex also tweeted yesterday, hundreds of Nipsey fans showed up to the parking lot outside his store last night. He had a store? The crowd chanted his name, played music, lit candles, and paid tribute to the rapper. R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle. Well, it seems that investigation is underway. Hmm. R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle. Okay. Well, in lighter news, in television, ah, season two of the Umbrella Academy is officially happening. Now, I did watch the first season. It was pretty good. I had no idea. I knew nothing of the Umbrella Academy. And I said, well, it came up on my Netflix as a suggestion. So I watched it. I like superhero movies. And it was cool. Uh, Season two is officially happening. On Tuesday, Netflix confirmed the upcoming sophomore season of the Umbrella Academy with a new trailer. So the trailer is out there and it's available. Variety at Variety tweeted, Umbrella Academy renewed for season two at Netflix. Cool. And then Aiden Gallagher. He, oh, he must, I think he's one of the stars. Let's see. He's the, yeah, he's one of the stars of the show. He tweeted, we're back. Exclamation point. Season two of the Umbrella Academy has been officially announced by Netflix. All right. Looking forward to that show. Mental Samurai airing on Fox. Well, I don't have Fox either. Oh, but it is hosted by Rob Lowe. And I like Rob Lowe. And they are live tweeting right now as we speak at 838 in the p.m. Central Standard Time on April 2nd, 2019. Oh, my goodness. Developing yesterday, Mandan, North Dakota, quadruple homicide victims identified. Police identified that the owner and three employees of RJR Maintenance and Management were killed on Monday. Police have not identified or arrested a subject. Now, what kind of management is it? Heavy.com, at Heavy San, tweeted, is heavy, 
S-A-N, heavy S-A-N. Four people found dead in a quadruple homicide yesterday at RJR Maintenance and Management in Mandan, North Dakota, have been identified as Robert Fakler, Adam Fuhrer, Lois Cobb, and Bill Cobb. Police have not arrested or identified a suspect in the killings. This is as of seven hours ago. And then Wand TV News, at Wand TV News, seven hours ago, police on Tuesday identified the owner of a North Dakota, North Dakota property management business and three employees as the people whose bodies were found there a day earlier and said they don't yet have a suspect in the attack. Mm. Well, shoot. Why are people... Why are people so mean to each other? Mean people suck. In lighter news. <laughs> okay. I'm watching Tina Fey eat some chocolate with a fork. I guess that's just the, the gift that they're using. Behold, mushy brownie haters. There's an easy solution to your brownie need. If you're anti-mush, like Chelsea Peretti, the answer is just a crazy pan away. <laughs> Chelsea Peretti tweeted out, hate mushy brownies, chewy only, thanks. And then she tweeted again, crispy edges, of course. And then Heather saw CM times two at Stuart, Stuart's Larson. Weird. Why is she Heather saw? And then she's at Stuart's Larson. Weird. Uh, she tweeted, who's making mushy brownies? Chelsea Peretti said, a lot of them are like mushy, wet, oily, stick to your fingers. John should be working, tweeted, and he's at aw ellipsin, aw dot dot dot. You got to get yourself an all edges brownie pan. It's my favorite. And look at this pan. All right. This pan is... It is designed to have little half walls in the pan to make all of your brownies have edges. So you'll have crispy edges and the nice soft middles. Just exactly what you need. <laughs> and Chelsea Peretti says, wow, available for sponsorship. So she likey. Very cool. I like brownies. Well, I think I've wasted enough of your time. I've enjoyed myself, you know, just chilling out here, hanging out, got my wireless mic, leaning back, and chit-chatting to the people. So if you've listened this far, you're a trooper. You're a fan. I thank you so much for listening to this podcast. This is on the What Makes You Famous feed. But I guess this will be the, the what makes you think. And I might do these on Tuesdays. Now, I'm available most Thursdays during the day and most Sundays to do, you know, to have the conversation, to get your story. If you're in the central Arkansas area, I'll come to you or we could set up at the library. That's the easiest thing. It's nice, neutral ground. And, uh, and do the podcast there. Or if you're not anywhere in the area and you want to promote something, you want to talk about yourself, you got a business that you want to promote, please give me a call, 501-470-6386. Or send me an email, info at radiowhat.com. Promote yourself. Do it. <laughs> we could set up a time. And uh, we could do it on the phone. I have... a very fine phone patch that we can do. I've done a, a few of these podcasts over the phone and they've come out pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun doing these podcasts. You know, it was once said that everyone, everyone eventually will have their own television channel or will have their own channel. Well, I guess everyone does have their own channel. You'll find this podcast on Podbean, 
on Spotify. I think it's on iTunes. It's on, oh, uh, Podcast Addict. I found that out today. Thanks, you, thanks again to Jason Lancaster for taking a listen to the Ryan Hinman podcast. Ryan Hinman's a local musician. Jason Lancaster's a local musician. And uh, I like that. You know, I like helping out the locals. Hopefully somebody gets a little bump from the What Makes You Famous podcast. So this has been What Makes You Think, I guess, on the What Makes You Famous podcast on the What Makes Network. <laughs> it's Keys Dan from Radio What's dot com dj little rock dot com thank you so much for listening peace i'm out of here radio what the music you want hey guys this is shelly g with a fast fact bob dylan's first professional performance was an opening act for john lee hooker at gertie's folk city in new york in 1961 do you have a fast fact Share it with us at Interactive Radio, RadioWhat.com. Tweet, tweet, yo. Follow Radio What on Twitter at RadioWhatTwit. Tweet, tweet, yo.